So actually, this picture was from two years from now, here in Barcelona. <laughs> Quite curious. Um, yeah, about my talk. So we are going to talk a bit about the HTTP2, about the protocol, uh, how it works, how to debug it, and a bit about uh, how it's being handled in Node.js. So a quick show of hands, who already knows about HTTP2? Okay, some of the people. And uh, who already implemented something, some server with HTTP2? Okay, not that much. In production? Okay, cool. Yeah, some of you. Okay. Uh, so before I start, I'd like to introduce myself. Okay. Oops. Yeah, I would like to introduce myself. So I work at uh, YLD. It's a Node.js consulting company. We do React, we do Node.js, we do some DevOps too. Um, and yeah, I like Node.js, I like React. Uh, I participate in these communities a bit, uh, in particular in the HappyJS one. Um, I organize RequireLX, which is quite of uh, a JavaScript meetup in Lisbon. So I'm from Portugal. Uh, actually, my name is, you can see in my badge is Daniela Borges, in my presentation is Daniela Matos de Carvalho, but because I'm Portuguese, my name is like Daniela Alexandra Esteves Gil Borges Matos de Carvalho, so it's quite huge, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, and I do love a lot photography, as you have seen in the, that picture before, uh, and origami. So I'd like to start with this question, what are the problems that we are facing globally right now, and uh, why are we even thinking about a new protocol? Why HTTP 1 uh, may not be enough? So we live in this world with lots of countries, and we have lots of concerns about hardware. So you, when you are trying to put your servers, you think about AWS, uh, DigitalOcean, Google, and so on, and you think about uh, how much time does it take to send some package from one place to another, uh, and basically, you take a look at that, you try to put the servers right next to your clients. That's nice. But we all have different access, and uh, we are now having lots of concerns about this, about offline first, about lots of applications. And you know that we probably have lots of people around the globe right now uh, trying to, to access, and the connections may not, may not be that good. So for instance, in Portugal, I have like a pretty good uh, connection, but for instance, in my Airbnb here in Barcelona, I was getting crazy because I could not increase the size of uh, uh, the letters in a slide that I have here. So, ah, ah yeah, we need to, to have a pretty good connection. And uh, we are trying to, to understand and uh, su successfully understand that people have uh, different kind of access and we need to consider that. So we have actually different bandwidth and different latency. And uh, Google did the study a while ago. Um, I think uh, you should uh, take a look at uh, a book from uh, Ilya Gregoric, where I picked some of the images that I have in the slides. And basically what they did in 2012 uh, was taking a look on how the bandwidth varies and uh, the latency vary uh, and try to compare that with the page load time. So what they concluded is that when the latency decreases, the page load time is, is decreasing also linearly, which is kind of what we want. So we want to have really low latency in order to achieve high throughput. And uh, that's when HTTP2 enters. So it stands, HTTP2 as you probably know, otherwise you are not being in this room, uh, it stands for uh, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and it's how we communicate between clients and servers, yeah, you know. Uh, and actually, it was created uh, quite a long time ago. I only had one year, so I bet that probably you were already born too, but at the time, uh, uh, there, there was uh, like a simple version, the standard one. And uh, as I said before, it handles the, the connection between clients and servers. So, uh, the, there was these this major versions. So in the first one, uh, 0.9 that we have here, basically there was no metadata, no headers, just a simple body saying hello world, uh, <laughs> nothing more. In version 1.0, we started to have some headers, some metadata, which is quite cool. We included some security features also. 
in 1.1, we finally got uh, Keep Alive connections, which is cool. So after sending in one request, it doesn't close. We can continue to, to use the same connection. And uh, finally, the version 2, uh, and we are not there yet, despite the fact some, some websites use it quite a lot. We'll see in the next slide. Uh, it introduces some, uh, some uh, performance improvements, taking into account the, the new requirements that we have on the web. So back to the version 1.1. We have these Keep Alive connections. And in the beginning, when you have like a connection between the client and the server, they try to communicate. They try to, to do the end check. So here I have like the end check. And after it, uh, two requests for the HTML and the CSS file. And uh, basically, you can, uh, using the HTTP pipelining introduced in 1.1, uh, you can like do this first in, first out. So I can send first the HTML request and receive the response. And after it, send the, the request for the CSS and then get the response. Or you can send it in parallel, like I'm doing here. However, it, it comes with a problem. Uh, basically, you have to wait till the, the largest file being processed by the server to get it returning to, to the client. So this problem is called head of line blocking. And uh, basically, right now, uh, we do uh, lots of workarounds trying to solve, the, solve this kind of things. And one of those is having multiple TCP connections. So browsers have like a pool of six uh, uh, parallel connections that can be used. And uh, despite the fact that it introduces, uh, it introduces quite some complexity, uh, it uh, needs to be handled by the browser, and it's the way, more or less, we try to, to handle this and have fast connections. So uh, we also have to consider if is six connections good? Uh, maybe having two, it's good. Having three, it's good. So it's like a lot of com complexity that needs to be handled uh, normally by the browser, and we have to take it into consideration. Otherwise, we may get some problems. And instead of having something that could be really fast, it may not be the case. Some other things that we do, uh, for instance, con concatenation. Uh, we pick all the JavaScript files and CSS, and we use uh, Webpack and Rosarify and many others to squash it and create a bundle. Yeah, this is quite nice. But if you have to change one of these files, we may have a problem, you know. Uh, and despite the fact that Webpack, like right now, has uh, Webpack.ensure. And you can, uh, for instance, in React, create uh, multiple uh, bundles for different pages and so on. Well, it's still a workaround. Um, spriting, another example. We have some images. You need to send them. We put all in the same image file. And then we process it using CSS. Still more and more workarounds. Uh, but the goal is still the same, to decrease latency. So introducing HTTP2. Uh, it's happening right now. So about 13 of the websites uh, are already using HTTP2, which is great. Um, it was published not that long ago. Uh, n like, not two, two years from now. Uh, but actually, uh, the, there was a previous experimental protocol uh, created, which was uh, Speedy, that was created uh, in 2012. And uh, well, it's quite similar to HTTP2. There are some minimal differences, like the way they, they do header compression and so on. But it's quite, quite more or less the same. Uh, so it's here for some time. Google did some experiments. We are using this. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, and the, the nice thing about it is that we are trying to, uh, HTTP2 tries to extend, uh, and I think it does it quite well. Uh, the, the version one. So everything that you still have in version one, you are going to still have in version two. So HTTP2 introduces this new binary framing proto layer, sorry. Uh, and basically, uh, what it says is that everything is sent using a binary format. So if you want to access that content, you may have to decrypt it. However, uh, it's more performance. We have less security errors and so on. Uh, and uh, as you can see in this image, on the left side, uh, it's on the application layer. And I have here that uh, TLS is optional. And actually, it's really optional. 
However, the browsers implement HTTPS, and we need to, to use it. So yeah, fortunately, they, they do it. Uh, and we have to, to create servers that uh, are able to do this. So uh, another difference is, is that in HTTP 1, we are used to have like these messages with the headers, the metadata, and the, and the body itself. In HTTP 2, what happens is that we have like uh, lots of streams and uh, lots of messages being created on the, the two ends, both client and server. And we are going to send one headers a frame and one or more data frames depending on the size of the message. So we have only one connection instead of six, um, instead of doing that workaround. And we have like multiple streams being uh, created and they can be created by the client or the server. We'll see it next. And uh, basically uh, what happens is that uh, the stream uh, receives some frames and when the frames uh, finish, the last data frame is received, they assemble the message itself and it can be uh, used by the client or the server depending on who is receiving the message. But HTTP2 has many other features and uh, the one I like the most is server push. I did quite uh, funny things with it. Uh, but yeah, we'll take a look at these four uh, features which I think are the most important. So stream prioritization. This is basically some of the work that is being done already by uh, or before HTTP2 by the browsers. Uh, so they try to guess what's the most important thing you want to receive in a website. So you know that we have this kind of rule when you are doing front end, you want to have like styles on top, JavaScript on the bottom, it's more or less the same thing. So uh, what happens is that we have this concept of dependency and weights. So uh, we want first to receive the HTML, after it the CSS, and between this example here that I have here, script one and script two, basically I want to receive script one first because it has higher priority. Uh, this work is done by the browsers and we have to take into consideration that uh, different browsers may implement this in a different way. So yeah, you may need to take a look on how they are handling this, but there are some rules that are expected to be the same. Server push, the, the cool feature. So uh, as the name tells you, is basically uh, the server can push uh, content to the client. And this is really nice if, for instance, you are uh, using handling the index route and you want to push some stuff for the client, some CSS, and uh, you just want to, the client to have it, okay? So, this works if uh, uh, the server is in the same origin, absolutely. And uh, uh, instead of using uh, headers, it uses a push promise uh, frame. And there's also this uh, reset stream uh, frame that could be sent by the client if the client decides that he don't want to receive this specific stream because it already have the content cached or ha don't want to receive it because has no size to, to process it, for instance. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's, that's mainly it. Uh, the streams are like multiplexed and we can have like this uh, network optimization through this. Uh, there's also this um, header compression algorithm called HPEC. Uh, in Speedy, they try to use uh, JZIP, but then for security reasons, they decided to create HPEC, it's also created by Google. Uh, it has its own uh, RFC. And uh, the only thing I want you to understand from here, if you don't know already how it works, is that when you send the first request here, um, you, uh, in this example, I'm sending a get to slash resource, right? And uh, that's nice. When the, the second uh, request is done, the only difference between the first and the second is the path. So I will only send the path. That's basically this, it's in summary. Uh, the only consideration that we need to have here is that both the client and the server have to keep somehow the state about what's going on, right? Because if I just send the request to, I don't know what happened before. I don't know the rest of the, the headers that were there. So we have to, to have these considerations. What happens if uh, something fails, yeah? Uh, there's also that possibility. Uh, in HTTP2, there's also this concept of flow control, 
So I'll try to summarize it, but in, in, in the beginning, both the client and the server exchange these settings, which have the information about the frame and window sizes, what they want to receive, what's the maximum data that are available. Then after it, the client or the server are sending multiple data frames, uh, and after a while, they can update that window size accordingly to what they can receive or not. Uh, there are multiple implementations uh, for HTTP2 in, in many different languages. Uh, I don't have uh, off of the list here, like it doesn't fit the space. I just picked this one because there are many implementations, there are three implementations in this list uh, for Node.js. Uh, the most well known right now is Node Speedy. You can find it by, in 9 p.m. by Speedy. But uh, you need to take into consideration that uh, they are trying, as it was said uh, before today, uh, they are trying to create um, a another uh, version of HTTP2 under the Node.js organization, GitHub. So you may check it out. Um, it's handled by James now. Uh, but what's the easiest way to understand if a server is talking HTTP2 or not? What do you need to do? So I think the easiest way, like the basics, like if you are talking to someone that doesn't know anything about this and you just have to tell him, oh, okay, is taking a look at the requests. And here I have two requests for GitHub page and for the http2.golang.org website. I was playing around and find this website. They have some cool examples. It's really nice. Um, so, so I do recommend to, to check it out. And uh, basically what happens here is that you may guess that uh, looking at the request URL, you'll see, oh yeah, the second one is obviously the, the, the one that talks HTTP2, and you are right. But if you don't look at this, this uh, particular field, there's another one, the status code, and you may notice that the message disappears. So right now we just have the number. Uh, I kind of agree with that because some languages and some implementations try to change the message and I don't like that, it's kind of an anti-pattern. But uh, yeah, it's quite easy to take a look at. You can also obviously take a look at the ciphers that are being exchanged and so on. Um, we'll get there. Uh, browser also gives you some other information. Uh, people on the bottom may not see, but basically uh, you can, uh, in developer tools, you can take a look at the protocol that is being used and uh, you can have H2 there uh, and also the connection ID. So the connection ID that is being used here is the same in all requests, which makes sense because we are using HTTP2. You can also use the command line. Uh, there's this uh, ng-http2c uh, library that could be included in curl. So if you just try uh, the normal installation for curl, it will not work. But uh, you can add the uh, dash dash HTTP2 and it will work or you can try it individually and you can try to access to, to, to a page using HTTP2. Or you can use our, an application. And uh, the one I picked, because it's probably the, the best used, or you can use TCP down, but it's not that friendly, you know, um, is Wireshark. And uh, Wireshark helps you to inspect the network and see uh, which uh, messages are being uh, past and in particular we are, go are going to take a look at the frames. So how to debug this, how to understand uh, how it works. So the first thing you need to do uh, is to decrypt the data because both client and server are, to are talking using HTTPS and uh, we really want to decrypt the data. There are many tutorials on the web over this so I'll do not get into there. But once you have the, the data, uh, the information decrypted, you can take a look at it. And using Wireshark and the filters for, that they have for HTTP2, it's quite easy to understand what's going on. Uh, so the first thing that you can see is the TCP and shake. So both client and server are trying to make a connection. The client is sending the client hello message. And uh, as you can see here, the client is trying to negotiate using HTTP2. And if it doesn't work, it can fall back to Speedy or to HTTP 1. Uh, there's also some information about the ciphers and so on. Um, after it, the server is answering and uh, sending this information and saying, oh, yeah, I already talk. I also talk uh, HTTP 2. Let's talk HTTP 2. Yeah. Uh, 
so they start talking, and uh, after changing the, the ciphers and so on, they can finally talk. And uh, you know, I have this message like, uh, they are sending some magic here, if you can see. It's quite a strange thing from HTTP2 that guarantees that it's a HTTP2 connection. So just don't care about it. And then they are changing uh, the frames I just tell you, like settings, window updates, and priorities. Yeah, quite nice. It's more or less what we saw before. Um, and uh, yeah, after it, uh, I decided to take a look uh, at this particular page. So I tried to get this page, which is basically uh, this. Uh, oh, it's quite, quite in the bottom. But uh, what happens here is that uh, this particular page has all these images, which are 180 images that are being loaded. So what we, I want you to understand is that it will be two times 180 uh, frames that are going to be sent, at least, uh, because we can have more than one uh, data frame, and you need to have the headers, too, for each of the frames, plus the HTML content that is on the top and on the bottom, you know. Uh, so we can analyze, kind of analyze the stream. And uh, I just picked like one of the images that is in this, in this uh, GIF I just showed you. So first, uh, the client in the source, it was me, were trying to, to request uh, the information, the, this particular image. And you can see in the headers what I'm trying to request here. So you can see that is an image. The, the, the header, it's image, PNG, and so on, the encodings, and so on. A uh, lot of stuff here. And after a while, the server is sending me uh, a headers. Yeah, cool. It's what I was expected. Uh, and uh, it says, like, the content length. It confirms that, uh, in this case, it was a, a, a JPEG image, and so on. And you can also see uh, the information about the flags, which is quite important here. So. Uh, I told you, you can have like multiple data frames. So uh, for instance, if the data frame I'm going to receive next is not, is not last, the last one, it's not going to be the end stream uh, flag. In this case, this is the headers. So the end stream is false. And the ne in the next one is going to be uh, two. Uh, so the last one is just the, the, data from the data with the content, which in this case was just the, the eye of this uh, smallest toy. Um, and yeah, Wireshark helped a lot to, to debug it. Uh, you obviously could try this at home with care. Um, but yeah, how can you use it with Node.js? I just have like small, simple examples because the implementations are, um, I can't say quite similar, but uh, the way you organize your code are more or less similar. So in this case, I used Speedy, but I could be using any, any other because they are really quite similar. And um, what happens here is that I'm requiring Speedy, uh, then I'm sending some options with my certificates, and then creating the server. In, the, in this case, Speedy is trying to, to mutate. The name is Speedy, but they, they also support HTTP2. Uh, Speedy is trying to mutate the, the request, and is going to add this flag, is Speedy. So if it's Speedy, you are using HTTP2, otherwise we are not. Um, this is uh, supported, uh, you can use this with, uh, with AppyJS or with Express, both work for it. Um, and uh, you can also send push streams. So yeah, you can, in the beginning, before the server starts, you can load the, this, these assets you want to push. And for instance, in the index route, you can try to push uh, those, those, uh, those files that you want uh, through to the client using push stream. Um, yeah, there's more or less this about the, the, the HTTP2 implementation that you'll need to use in your clients, maybe, or your products. Um, but something you have to consider is this thing that we already talked a bit today. So maybe HTTP2 is going to be added to the core of Node.js. We don't know. Uh, yet. I just want you to take into consideration, maybe check it out. Uh, but the implementation will be quite similar to what I showed here. Uh, I would like also to share this uh, blog post. Please check it out if you are interested. I played a, a bit with the uh, server push and service workers. Uh, and uh, all the results and the GitHub 
So you can re replicate everything uh, are in the blog.ylde.io. It's a blog from my company. I did like these experiments. Uh, and I think it was really nice. Like I learned a bit about it. And it also helped me to, to debug. And I also learned how to, to do this with the R shark. And I could debug everything that is going on. So in this case, uh, what I was doing uh, was pushing two, two files. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, styles.css and app.js in the beginning. Then when the, the service worker is trying to request them, I already have them in the HTTP2 cache. But I have to, to have some considerations regarding the HTTP2 cache. So please check the blog if you are interested. I may be uh, going to do another talk about this because uh, it's not that documented and it's quite interesting stuff. So yeah, if, if you want to talk in the coffee break, please talk to me too. Uh, I'm quite enthusiastic about this. Um, and yeah, we are almost finishing the presentation. So about 13% of the, the traffic over the web is using HTTP2. It's not that much, but uh, if you take a look, if you take a closer look, you'll understand that the websites that are using it are the websites you use the most. So yeah, I think uh, this is going probably to be the year of the HTTP2. And we are going to see more and more si websites using, in, using it. So that's cool. Uh, and how can you start? Basically, I think you should do incremental migration. So if you are going to create a new route, maybe you can start using HTTP2 for that. If you are changing another one, you already have the tests. So maybe you can try using it, or at least do a PLC uh, for it. Uh, well, but there are some considerations that we are used to do that may not be that necessary. Uh, so for instance, concatenation and sprouting, we talked a bit about it. Well, we can use server push for that. Maybe not in all the cases, but most of the cases we can use it. Instead of using six connections, one connection should be enough. So some conclusions about it. Uh, HTTP2 is here to stay. Uh, I'm not sure, and probably that's my opinion, uh, it's not going to be uh, like an end. It's like a path to, to get to a, a new and better protocol. Um, we'll still need to support uh, older versions because there's a lot of people in many different countries that are using some different connections, some older browsers, and so on. And you have to support uh, HTTP 1. Uh, Wireshark was good to debug. We played a bit with it. The protocol is quite complex. For instance, the, the HPEC uh, stuff uh, regarding the, the other compre compression, uh, but it's quite interesting. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's mainly it. If you are still interested in protocols, I recommend you to also take a look at uh, Quick, which is quite similar to HTTP2, but uses UDP instead of TCP. So, and IPFS uh, uses a peer-to-peer -peer network. And I have, oops, I have many other blog posts about these topics and protocols under the YLD blog. So if you want to learn a bit more about it, please contact me in the coffee break or check it out. And that's it. Thank you. <laughs>